Land Rover Series 2A. I love this guy. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Yes, I did that on purpose. So today's episode of Restoration Passion, we're going to show you a little bit of depth on our Land Rover Series 2A. Uh, this vehicle is pretty cool for us here at Battlefield and uh, it's something that we put together because we needed just a, a get around vehicle for around the yard and often uh, deliveries and things come in and we have something cool and iconic to uh, help us move things. It's a real historic vehicle so yeah stay tuned. This configuration here is from Rhodesia. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the conflict in Rhodesia was around the 70s. And we wanted to do a Rhodesian vehicle because it's just something you don't see. Uh, I don't really know of very many places that have an example of any Rhodesian camouflage or Rhodesian vehicle. It's pretty basic. Um, in Rhodesia, a vehicle like this would have just been sort of a barracks vehicle and then eventually turned into uh, what was required for the conflict. But uh, the markings are all basic. You have your registration number. And then each Rhodesian brigade had a different animal from the African uh, veld for their uh, insignia. The elephant is the first brigade for Rhodesian light infantry. I really like this vehicle because um, the Land Rover says nothing about how much money's in your wallet or your taste or sense of style. The whole point of this vehicle is pure utility and functionality. It's designed to do one job and uh, that job is whatever you need it to be. So along the way, a vehicle like this always gets beaten up and shows its scars and it develops a lot more character than uh, a standard streetcar would. So another thing about Land Rover was too, um, it was born out of necessity and unlike a lot of other vehicles that are developed, uh, they have time to focus on areas. Uh, this vehicle was made, uh, initially it was only supposed to be a stopgap vehicle for essentially uh, war-torn Britain and they're in a place immediately after World War II where uh, the country is still rebuilding and the Land Rover came about as uh, again just something to get out there to the people and be utilized for uh, cleanup and basically to get the country back on its feet and this was going to be one of the workhorses that did that. Even the body of the Land Rover, it's all aluminum or aluminium for the Commonwealth people out there. It was all uh, surplus material left over from the war effort. So they had so much aluminum around for the building of aircrafts and we're in a place now where that's no longer a demand. So they had so much surplus material that went into the production of this vehicle. Even the original Series 1 that green color you see as the base coat from the vehicle off the line, that's all paint left over from war surplus, which they would have used on fighter planes and bombers. So the beauty of the Land Rover in its simplicity is that it's so easy to modify to the individual's needs and how they need it. And even here at Battlefield, um, this vehicle was sitting for a long time in a pretty sad state and we just took it and there was no need to shop around for all the original parts. It was never going to be a collector's item, so to speak. It's a utility vehicle. So you can essentially seats, uh, center console parts, almost anything can be adapted into the vehicle. So we've got Humvee seats in here, aftermarket uh, black canvas seats, and basically with everything being straight angled and very little on the vehicle is machine pressed, you can bolt and screw almost anything you want wherever you want it and it gives each one of these Land Rovers its own character and I really like that. So it's been said by a lot of car designers and also in a lot of other online Land Rover reviews out there that 
No car should ever have a straight line by design. And the beauty of the Land Rover is exactly that. It's like they had intentions of they were going to continue or something happened and then boom. But this straight back gives it its own iconic design and again it points out that pure need of utility. Um, it doesn't need to be a soccer mom car or a fancy street vehicle. It's literally everything that is in modern vehicles was just blown away and this is what you're left with. And um, yeah, I really, I like this vehicle. I like it. So for a lot of the military vehicle enthusiasts out there, you all know the Wheelies Jeep and the Ford GPW. It's worth noting that during World War II, the British used those vehicles, the Wheelies Jeep. And um, you can see so many design features of the Wheelies Jeep that were carried over into this vehicle. The driveline and the uh, frame is almost exactly the same uh, by design. And they've essentially taken the Wheelies Jeep and just added to it. is a 2.25 liter inline four cylinder uh, that they ended up producing in mass so this one here is producing 62 whopping horsepower at over 4,000 rpms and about 105 foot pounds of torque at around 3,000 rpms um, this is a very very simplistic design it is meant to be maintained and it can also be rebuilt while it's still inside the vehicle they did that so that way if you're in the field somewhere and you need to make a major repair you can do it right here in regards to being in the field and everything with this let's say you have a battery failure electrical failure on this vehicle you can also start it with a hand crank right here and feeding it through and it actually hooks up to the crankshaft so that way you can crank it over by hand and start it. The transmission in this vehicle is a four-speed manual gearbox and uh, it also has a high and low select lever as well so that way essentially it ends up turning into somewhere around eight speeds possibly with that high low as well. So one of the benefits of this vehicle here, a Series 2A, um, and all these older Land Rovers, it's just like any other older vehicle that you see anywhere around the world. Um, they're very simplistic in design. They're very simple to run, and they're very simple to maintain. When it comes to actually restoring something like this, you gotta realize these were produced in mass. So if you, if you come across a time where you need a part, Typically, you can find it anywhere in the world, whether you're in Australia, Africa, Europe, or even here in the US. You'll be able to find the parts or accurately restore one of these. You get stuck somewhere, you can go down to the parts store and just get a random part for uh, another vehicle, like a ignition coil or something like that. Throw it right in, and it'll actually end up working as well. So, definitely love that about these, how simple they are. Highly recommend it. So, as Scott just mentioned, uh, this vehicle has being seen and used all over the world and uh, its flexibility to have almost anything done to it by the end user is one of its biggest strengths so this thing has seen combat all over the world and been adapted to many different combat applications and uh, militaries all over the world have selected this vehicle as their uh, essentially their general purpose vehicle then you see this thing throughout the mining industry all around Australia, um, in Africa, Asia. You'll see this vehicle as a safari vehicle and safari vehicles have their own set of unique modifications that have to be done. And it is said that the Land Rover of this era is the golden age of Land Rover. And uh, I really like that. I think that's something special. The very basic necessities, it will meet and that is it. You won't get anything else out of it and quite frankly you don't really need anything else out of it. That's not what this vehicle was built for.
Since I've known a lot of Russian vehicles for obvious reasons, uh, this part right here is dear to my heart. Right here, the crank start, I love that. Um, and actually, it is a great feature because, you know, if your battery is out or, you know, you're in any kind of trouble and the engine won't start, this is your last resort. This is one more option and that one usually works. So, yeah, basically it's, uh, it's like a rod, kind of like a twisted rod and right here goes in, right connects right to the part of the crankshaft, basically, of the engine and you turn it by hand and love it. Like the lights on this baby, mega generic. I don't think it gets any more generic than this. I mean, and the beauty of it, of course, is pretty obvious. You know, if you don't have a light bulb, like the proper one, proper one, uh, you can probably climb on that electrical pole, get the, get the light bulb out and put it in here and it'll still work. So that's, again, that's the beauty of it. This, is, this vehicle is the closest to everything. You can build it out of just about anything. My favorite part about this Land Rover is the Heavy Hitters team has a morning ritual of going to Battlefield Brew and getting coffee. And uh, coffee's that thing that just bump starts someone's day. And every day is going to be different around here, but we always get coffee. And uh, this little baby here, it's, uh, it's part and parcel with our coffee routine.